Good evening, everyone. We begin the readout tonight with yet another escalation of Putin's war in Ukraine. Late today, President Zelensky said that Russia has begun an all-out offensive in the east. In his latest video, the Ukrainian leader said that the Russian military has begun the battle for Donbass. It's something Ukraine has been preparing for, a new phase of the war that could see up to three times as many Russian troops in the Donbass region. That region includes the city of Mariupol, where Russia, which Russia needs in order to forge a land corridor to Crimea. The city is besieged. At least 100,000 people remain without access to food and water. But Ukrainian soldiers are still holding on as Russian forces swarm the city. The Ukrainians rejected Russia's proposal to spare their lives if they would stop fighting. Meanwhile, Russia is not in full control of the city yet. We are learning more about the treatment of Ukrainians in places Russia has occupied, however, like in Irpin, where new drone video shows dozens of graves. Police say that investigators have examined 269 dead bodies in the city. Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin is rewarding his soldiers accused of war, prime, war crimes in Bukha, giving them an honorary title and praising their special merits, mass heroism and courage. And the city of Kharkiv is still under attack, with at least two civilians killed in shelling today. Residents there are evacuating, but one woman told Reuters that it's futile if all of Ukraine is under attack anyway. She's referring to missiles that struck the western city of Lviv, a haven for displaced Ukrainians and refugees on their way out of the country. Lviv is also a supplies and logistics hub, where the city, with the city suffering its first fatalities since the beginning of the war. That attack in Lviv hit close to home today, with my colleague, the great Ali Aruzi, and friend of the show, Malcolm Nance, seeing the missiles rush by as they conducted an interview. Ukraine's unique territory. Is that going down? No, but I've never seen a fast mover. I'm wondering whether that was a cruise missile. Did you see the aircraft? No, I didn't see them. Are we in an air raid? Yes. Yeah, we are. Okay. We had the air raid. So there's another coming. Wait, there'll be three. Yeah. Stand by. Striking to the west, that's two. What we should was get that at least plane? one more. That wasn't a plane, it was a cruise missile. That was a cruise missile? Yeah. Wait for one more. They're fired in 30-second yeah, intervals. Inter they fire them in 30-second intervals. Smoke. There we go. Stand by. Three, cruise missile, caliber. Look. Stand by. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, ten, here. eleven. Yeah, there 12, it is. There's 13, the smoke. 13. There's the smoke. Here. That's three. So three cruise missiles. Yeah. Joining me now from Lviv is NBC News correspondent Ali Aruzi. And Ali, that is harrowing footage. Um, you know, we had come to, to think of Lviv as the, the safer place, at least the safer place, uh, because it is so far to the West. Um, what does it mean that Russia would strike there? I mean, literally, in the middle of your interview, there are those cruise missiles flying overhead. Hi, Joy. That, that's right. I mean, look, I mean, you could hear in the interview, the, the one that we actually saw, the second one, I, it was so big, I thought it was an airplane. So that's the last thing we were expecting there. And then you saw that thump. And of course, throughout the beginning of this conflict, the outskirts of Lviv have been hit. They've hit fuel depots and airplane uh, uh, factories, but never the center of the city. This was a very built up area full of apartments, houses. Uh, and it was done at 8.30 in the morning when people are going about their daily routine. Now, the Russians said in a statement that they hit a warehouse where uh, ammunition from the West was coming in from, but uh, they didn't say that they hit an auto repair shop. And this is the first time that they've killed people here in Lviv. Seven people were killed in that strike. Uh, amongst the injured was a three-year-old child that had escaped from Kharkiv, uh, only to be injured by a Russian missile here in what was supposed to be a safe zone. And we've seen waves and waves of displaced people coming here looking for sanctions 
country looking for refuge in Lviv, but they're no longer finding that here. You speak to Ukrainians all through the day today, and they don't say, will, will Lviv be hit again? They ask, when will Lviv be hit again? So that they, Putin has really broadened his canvas of attacks, and he's made it very clear that there is no more sanctuary in this country. So people are very on edge here. They were shaken up before this happened, when the outskirts of the city was, was hit. Now they are really frightened that they could be a target in this war here in Lviv. And, and you know, it, it is pretty remarkable. I mean, the, the, is the idea, and is what you're hearing on the ground, that Russia is expanding because they don't seem to have the capability, to be blunt, to wage war throughout this massive country. They seem to have been, at least up until the last couple of weeks, focusing on the east, on trying to sort of create this land bridge um, to Crimea. Does it feel, at least as you're there in Lviv, that they've changed that plan and are again trying to take the whole country? Um, I'm not sure if they're trying. I mean, Malcolm will be able to speak to this much better than I can, but I'm, I'm not sure they'd be able to take the country. So as they're botching their attack more and more. They hold on to none of the major cities here except Kherson. Uh, the Ukrainians are still in control of much of their land. So they keep terrorizing the populations, as we've seen in Bucha, in Irpin, in Hostomil, now here in Lviv. So that tactic, is, I think, is, is to make people very frightened here, to make the Ukrainian people capitulate and say, we've had enough of these bombs raining down on us. But if anybody has been to this country, the Ukrainians are in no mood to capitulate. They're in no mood to give up an, even an inch of their land. Uh, uh, even Zelensky said if those soldiers in Mariupol are killed, uh, a deal is off the table. So they are determined at whatever cost to hold on to their land, ho hold on to their sovereignty and look after each other here in Ukraine. Ali Aruzi, um, please be safe, my friend. Really appreciate you in Lviv. Much appreciated. And joining me now from a secure location in Western Ukraine is Malcolm Nance, executive director of the Terror Asymmetrics Project. He is fighting with the International Legion of Territorial Defense of Ukraine. And Malcolm, um, we just watched that video um, of you and Ali Aruzi was attempting to interview you for us uh, to get more information on what you're doing. We saw those cruise missiles fly overhead. So explain to us um, why you are there and what you are doing. Well, as you know, I spent quite a bit of time here in the pre-war period. And when the invasion happened, I had friends who were in Donetsk, who were in the Ukrainian army, who were writing to us and telling us, we're not going to survive tonight. We've been hit 500 times. Uh, you know, these are graduates at Defense Language Institute. These are my friends. And, you know, as the more I saw of the war going on, the more I thought, I'm done talking. All right. It's time to take action here. So uh, about a month ago, I joined the International uh, Legion here in Ukraine, and I am here to help this country fight, you know, what essentially is a war uh, of, of, its, of ex extermination. This is an existential war, and Russia has bought it to these people, and they are mass murdering civilians. And there are people here like me who are here to do something about it. And we have some uh, video here. This is some, some video that was shot by um, Ali's team um, of yourself with some supplies and the things that you are working on while you're there. We know there are about 20,000 people from 52 countries that are currently in Ukraine um, and have been there from the start of the war. What are international um, troops like yourself, what are you all tasked to, to do? Well, we are here for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to protect the innocent people of Ukraine from this from this Russian aggression. And, you know, it, it's it's not a conventional war, Joy, uh, even though the, you have two armed forces going head to head here. What you have is you have another group. Uh, I won't even refer to the Russians as an army, just using mass heavy weapons that are used in combat against civilians. Uh, they are destroying infrastructure. And then you find that they go to the cities and they massacre men, women, and children. And that is the fundamental reason everyone is here. The International Legion is a multinational force. It is men and women. There are, you know, thousands here who are here to protect this country. And for the most part, uh, we, we really have to assist them in any way to stop this. And so I've decided I came here to assist them, uh, you know, with the skills that I have myself.
And we know that this, there is a tradition uh, of Americans and others going overseas uh, to assist in wars overseas. Uh, Eugene Bullard is somebody uh, who people think of in that way as an African-American young man, 19 years old, went over uh, and fought in two world wars. Um, so we know that there is a tradition um, of doing this. And I wonder for you, do you feel that, you know, foreigners stick out? wherever they are. People know uh, that you clearly are not Ukrainian um, when they see you. Do you think that that poses any special danger to the people who are not Ukrainian who are there? No, it doesn't, because the war that's being waged here is being waged against everybody. Look, they're not going around hunting for American flag patches or to see who's, uh, who's black, who's Asian, who's Latino. Uh, we are a f part of the Ukrainian armed forces. We are brothers and sisters with the Ukrainian army. And that being said, we are fighting side by side, elbow to elbow with them. The Russians, on the other hand, they barely, I mean, when, except for when they're doing these offensives and moving with armor forces down these highways, they're barely attacking the Ukrainians. They're maintaining a line, but their emphasis seems to be the mass murder of civilians, which is, which is against all laws of war. These are war crimes. So um, believe me, the International Legion here, which is, which is a viable, strong combat force, which is out on the line, uh, no one's going around asking whether, you know, if you're Asian or you're Catholic or you're Jewish, whether you're actually helping the people of Ukraine. They are grateful for the help. And I'm grateful to be here. I'm glad that I can help my friends. And I don't have to listen to them uh, talk about how many children were killed that day. Uh, we're going to try to put a stop to it.